Hi there, Shine Brocha here, CTSS at Pepperell and Fuchs. And today we are going to learn how to interface our ASI K file gateway for your IoT application using REST API via Node-RED. To know how REST APIs work, I will recommend you to go to our previous two videos. The first one have, having an introductory to REST APIs. And the second video, we use that knowledge and implemented it using Postman. So without further ado, let's get started. To get started with Node-RED, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open a command prompt window. And over here, I have simple, simply have to type Node-RED and press Enter. Once that's done, it's going to start turning up the node red services and we can see it says server now running at 127.0.0.1 that's the local host and if i type this address i should start uh, seeing my uh, node red window it's all web based so you have to type it on a web browser i'm going to use a new flow for this demo and the first thing we are going to do is generate a jwt token so as you can see on the left hand side we have our palette section from here i will just drag an inject node once that's done i have to double click it and we don't need topic and for the payload i'm going to do is i'm going to write a json data for username and password so Username is going to be my field. The username is admin, so the comma. Then I'm going to type the password field, and my password is pepperl123. Once that's done, I can hit done, and I can go to my second node. So for that, I'm going to select a HTTP request node and drag it over here double click it and here i'm going to do a post method and the url will be our api call for auth login to get our jwt token i'm going to set the return to parse json and just going to give it a name jw5 this is just a label name once that's done i'm ready to connect these two and use a debug node to get the output everything looks fine i'll hit deploy to save and if i go to my debug window and inject i see that i'm successfully getting a jw token in response so this means that this flow is a valid flow and now we are ready to move ahead for our next flows we'll need to use this token value so to do that we need to save it to a variable in this case a global variable global variables in node red are known as flow so they start with flow and they have a variable name and to do this i'm going to use a change node i'm going to connect it to my HTTP request, double click. I'm going to set my instead of message, I'm going to name it a flow and token is going to be my name of the flow variable. And it's going to be set to message.payload. Once that's done, we are good. We can hit deploy and as we hit deploy, it's going to change this blue dot and it's going to take this off, which means everything's saved. Now we are ready to make our second flow. After acquiring our JWT token, we can use that token into getting some process data out of one of our modules. To do that, we're going to, going to make a new flow. Firstly, we're going to use the inject node. I don't need any payload data, so I'm going to delete that for simplicity. 
After that, I'm going to write a function. For that, I'll need a function node. And instead, I'm going to write some JavaScript. If you don't know JavaScript, you can just copy what I'm typing and it should be fine. So firstly, I'm defining a variable named token JWT. And inside that variable, I'm assigning our flow.token value, which we acquired in our last flow. To do that, I'm going to use flow.get function. And instead, I'm going to write token. That's the name of the flow.token variable. After that, I'm defining an empty header package. Um, and inside the headers authorization part, I'm going to define my bearer token. So to do that, uh, it's simple uh, message.header square brackets. I have to write authorization, make sure the spelling's right. And instead, we're going to write a string named bearer space plus our token. So that's in the variable token JWT. And inside that, I want to get the exact value in our token field. So, else it will just take the whole payload and paste it and it won't work. So once that's done, we are good for the function. We can connect the inject node with the function. And now I'm going to use an HTTP request node and connect that. Instead, I'm going to use my API call for getting process data on line one, module two. I want my payload to be sent as a request body, enable connection keep alive, and return as a parse JSON string. Once that's done, I'm ready to test it out using my debug node. All is good to test in middle. So I get my JW token. When I inject it, I get my message that payload inside. I get my digital values of my additional modules so bit zero right now is true and rest of the bits are false because i have a box in front of my ultrasonic sensor if i remove it I'm, i can change it, the value from true to false once this is established i will use another function block to parse my message.payload data further into the boolean value which we require for the dashboard led for this, I will, I'm dragging one more function block and keeping it right next to my HTTP request to feed in my message.payload. Firstly, I'm going to make a data variable. Instead, I'm going to assign my message.payload, which I get from my HTTP request. And I'm going to generate a message.payload with the parsed data. So for that, I'm going to assign my message.payload and then uh, I'm going to assign a data and I'm going to use the object property of JSON to get into the value which I require. To do that, first object name is in. And inside it, uh, I'm going to go to the sub object digital and bit zero for my first bit or first input in the module. Once that's done, we are good for this function also. I can do a quick test by using a debug node, connecting it and doing a deploy to save. I'm just gonna clear everything, injecting to get my token. If I inject again, I get my payload and my parsed payload again, which is true in this case. Now it's time to get some up in the dashboard so I'm using a UI LED element if you don't already have this on in your message palette be make sure to download it so I'm going to double click just going to set it up on the required dashboard and that's good I'm ready to do a deploy every time I want to update my dashboard element I need to click on inject to get the new values which is not practical so to overcome this, I'm going to use repeat option in our inject node. To do that, I'm just going to double click it. In the repeat section, I'm going to set an interval. For my JWT flow, I'm going to use 60 seconds as it expires after every 60 seconds. For my second flow, 
I'm going to keep it a little faster. So I'm going to keep the interval 0.5 seconds as it updates at a much quicker rate, the inputs. So after that, I can click on deploy. Now I can see my flows are updating automatically after the interval set. Now if I go to my dashboard, I can see the LED which we set in our flow. And if I remove the box in front of my sensor, I can see the LED going red. And if I again put the box in the front of it, I can see the state to go green and so on and so forth. Using the same concepts, we can make much more complex flows and more detailed dashboards, such example in front of you. These flows are getting values from different modules attached to the RZ line and displaying it to the dashboard elements. I can see all of these are represented over here. I can manipulate my sensors. So these are my digital inputs. I have some push buttons, which I can press. I can set my additional outputs from here. I have a distance sensor. If I bring an object in front of it, it changes its value. And, and also I've implemented some logic so it can show the status. And I can also change my output voltage from this slider. So everything's going real time. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please like the video and subscribe to our channel for the latest and the greatest in industrial automation and petrol and folks. Thanks again. Have a great day. Bye.